together for this wonderful honour. I feel um, humbled to be in amongst this group with uh, Ryan, Adele and everybody else here. Um, I was really surprised to get the, the invitation to, to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, but of course, um, delighted. I'm going to do one of the traditional things which you, sh which you should do and um, thank my wife and family initially. Bishop Partners is very much a family, and um, when you go on into the role of being managing partner of Pitcher Partners, that's not a commitment by me, it's a commitment by my family and my wife uh, in particular to do it. Um, and the, the, uh, the partners, well, they're not only women these days, they're all different, excuse me, diversity, uh, still catch up. Megan had a, a uh, dinner for the partners of partners at our home last week for all the retired partners and partners. So that's how close it is. And they had a wonderful time. Um, but in that role, and, and on the role of uh, Baker Tilly, I would travel six, seven times a year, and uh, Megan would be home here with the kids. We would travel. If, you, if all of you have been into Asia, you know what it is like to be in Asia. If you aren't going as a husband and wife and meeting with the other people on the other side, they want to see you part of the family and, uh, and that's how we do it and that's how Pitcher Partners grew. I was um, lucky during my career to work with some fantastic people like Ron, like Tim Jonas, like Terry who's here today um, and I do value the quality of really good people but people who don't have egos, they're not arrogant, they just understand they can deal with people. And if you're in medium-sized business and growing business, that's what works. The arrogance quite often comes in these big corporates. In the corporates that are growing, most of the owners of those corporates, and you look at the big corporates now, most of those owners didn't go to the union. They came up, they had drive, they were going to do something with their lives, they were going to make something. What they needed was they needed some good advice, they needed quality executives around them, because most of them were either product or sales, they've got drive, they've got an idea, they understand where they're going to go, hopeless of managing, hopeless of dealing with people, hopeless of structure. So what they need to do is bring in those people. And we would often help them, as pitcher partners, as partners of pitcher partners, to help bring in that group. And some of the, Ron and I were just talking about a few minutes ago, some of the successes of these companies that we've seen over 30 years within Pitcher Partners are just incredible. Cotton On, for example, started as a single retail shop, the son of one of my clients in Geelong, now employs 20,000 people worldwide, turns over over $2 billion, operating in 19 countries around the world, is a massive organisation. Hanson Corporation, started as a tech shop in the, in the street in Kew. It now employs 1,400 people worldwide in about 25 countries. Scandinavia could not raise a bill for electricity or water or telecom without hands. 90% of their revenue is outside Australia. So these private companies actually build up and, and do it. They don't. You don't hear about them, you don't see them, you're not in the press every day, and there are so many of them out there. One of the reasons I went on to the Chamber of Commerce and got you interested in this is that during the 90s, post the 91 recession, it was terribly tough for medium and small businesses. Banks treated them terribly. The I was telling you this story. The universities um, started training risk out of people. So the banks were, were averse to this. The university training was such that you have to have a business case, you have to be able to answer all the questions. You can never answer all the questions as an entrepreneur. You've got to take a risk, you've got to go and make decisions. Ultimately, you've got to get there. And so as that started to evolve during the 2000s, it was terrific. And the tech and IT work recently has allowed entrepreneurial behaviour to come back much more strongly than it was in the past. I went on to the chamber because 
we needed to turn that tide um, in 2003. Um, small business, medium business was really struggling. Um, I, dealt, I went on to the um, Australian Tony Award. I chaired the, the uh, Economic and Finance Committee for three years. When we were there, what do you think our biggest challenge? We represented 330,000 businesses with 4 million employees. What do you think the biggest challenge was? Reputation business, because of the banks. Because of the banks, because of the big corporates, the way they were going on, business was on the nose. You couldn't get anything, you couldn't do anything. So our main objective was not economic, it was not a tax reform, it was nothing, it was, it was change the tide and view of how people it's amazing when you get into things like the Chamber, the influence that you can actually have by having a voice and talking and being able to say the right things and do things. So I've had a, had a terrific career. I'm, as you can probably tell, I'm fairly passionate about the, the middle market. I spent my whole career trying to develop the middle market, train staff, really good staff, about the differences in dealing with small business, the corporate rubbish that goes on, um, politics, all that sort of stuff. Doesn't happen in mid mid-sized business. So that's what I've been about. One little story. Um, in my resume, I said I went to 11 schools. I did. I went to 11 schools. I changed schools every six months a year. In year 10, and I'd been working out on farms, you know, mucking around out on farms, I won scholarships. We were living in a country town called Greenfield in central New South Wales, out in the west. I got moved, I, I won a scholarship to go to Bathurst Agricultural College. My father was a bank manager. He got moved to Melbourne. So my father got moved to Melbourne, came down and said, well, we're just about to head off to Bathurst to go to Ag College, we go to Melbourne, what do you think we should do? So we go to Melbourne, get put up in a transit house in Two Rack Road, South Yarra. What's the local school? The local school is Melbourne High. I've been in a, a co-ed 200 kid school. I go down to Melbourne High, the teachers are wearing gowns, go in and see the deputy head, this is about May, in year 11, and he says to me, well, you can't do science if you haven't done the maths, so you better do the humanities. So I said, what does that mean? He said, oh, we're gonna do economics and accounts and different easy subjects, we're gonna go down that path. <laughs> so that was me, I went from being a jackaroo <laughs> to being an accountant. An amazing turn of fate. Anyway, thank you very much.